everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Severine and I am an actor who has not been to drama school for three years, but I do have a career that is three years long so far, where I'm now working full time as a professional actress. <laughs> You're probably thinking, damn Sev, how'd you do it? Your parents don't have Oscars and you haven't done three full years of drama school? What is your secret? Well, today I am here to give you all of the truth, the brutal honesty, the advice and the words which I wish I had heard before I started looking for agents. This is the video which I wish somebody had made for me before I started looking for an agent when I didn't have any experience, so keep watching. I spoke to my agents and asked them what they really want to see from actors who are trying to get signed in 2021. I'm not going to lie to you, it is a really, really strange time to be getting signed by an agent right now because to get an agent, you need to have work experience, but you can't get work experience in this industry when a global pandemic has shut down half of it but that's okay. I am here to tell you that it is possible to get an agent even in 2021. My agents have been interviewing people and they have been taking people on board. So if it can happen for them, it can happen for you, all right? You are gonna offer these agents a great experience which they cannot refuse. Yes, you, you are gonna offer an experience because you are an experience. You are a brilliant, divinely made, wonderful human who deserves every piece of success that they want in this world. So you want it, you gotta get it, okay? How do you offer a great experience? By writing a brilliant introductory email. I know, emails. Fucking hell, we're terrified of them, aren't we? If you have got no experience, do not be afraid to say that you have got no experience. There is no shame in having no experience. Everybody has to start somewhere, right? We are not just going to give a pitch and pitch ourselves. We are going to be a pitch. An incredible mentor of mine, Ricky Beadle Blair, teaches this way better than I do, but you want to be clear on your mission and your purpose. What do you want when you are writing to these agents? Do you want to be signed by them? Great, why? What's your purpose? Is it because you want to make money as an actor? Is it because you want to build up a range of credits on your CV? Is it because you really want to entertain this agent? What is your purpose? Be really clear and honest with yourself. If you want more information about how to be a pitch, I'm gonna link an incredible video which Ricky Beadle Blair did in collaboration with the Old Vic Theatre in London. And he explained this beautifully and he's a wonderful, wonderful person. Ricky, if you're watching this, how you doing? You good? <laughs> when you're writing your emails, yeah, this might hurt some of you, but I am here to be honest with my brilliant, brilliant students. So I'm gonna rip the bandaid off, okay? Nobody cares that you have been performing since you were a fetus in the womb. What? Nobody cares that you've been doing theater since you were eight years old. People wanna know about who you are now. Who are you now? What do you have to offer now? Who is the person writing this email to this agent today? It is a real conversation you're trying to have with these people. So talk about who you are now. Where are you at in your life? What are you interested in? What do you want for yourself as an actor? In the words of my agent, she said that humor and personality is great. It shows who you are and it shows individuality in an email, but don't use too many jokes or too much humor as a way to cover up for the fact that you just don't have any professional credits to your name. Get to the point, describe yourself. For example, I am a five foot four mixed race Caribbean and British woman who has a huge passion for playing Animal Crossing during quarantine and who is fluent in French and I also have played acoustic guitar for 10 years. That sentence already says a lot about me. I do not need to write a whole paragraph to describe myself. I've done it in a short amount of time. The skills are really important that you're mentioning too. What do you do when you're not acting? It's not every day chatting about acting. Us actors, yeah, we love to chat. We love to chat. <sighs> Bloody hell. We can talk for ages, man. Literally about acting and theater. It's like, cool, but what else do you know about? Who do you actually email? Do your research. <laughs> How do you do your research? Look at agencies' client lists. When you're going through their list of clients on their website, most agents keep their clients publicly on their website. See what kind of work their clients tend to get. If you're somebody who is brand new to the industry, you might be interested in having a look at agents whose clients might only have one or two credits because that could be a really clear indication of an agent who is great at breaking through new talent into the industry, especially if those credits are really recent. So have a look at dates, pay attention to when their clients were recently working. That's not necessarily an indication of how good or bad the agent is, by the way. It can just give you a clear idea of how many new people they've brought on recently. Also, if you don't have many credits, it could be a really good idea to have a look at agencies that are closely affiliated with courses or with training programs which you can do on the side. I highly, highly, highly suggest that you get some classes before you even start looking at signing with agents, all right? That doesn't mean three years of drama school. I think that every single actor should train. However, 
I do not think that three years of training is right for every actor. You have to find what works for you. Me, I go to individual classes and I research mentors, people who can help guide me on my career because I love the flexibility that that offers me in between working. Have a look at which classes will invite agents to come in or some agents even put it on their website that they are closely associated with this training program or that training program. One of the classes which I love to go to is called Go Hub Acting Workshop. They have got regular classes, mostly running on Wednesdays and Saturdays, but they also run screen acting workshops as well. I feel they are an amazing group of people who are solely focused on developing the craft of the actors. If you live in London, seriously, go check them out. They are incredible. They're led by Jazz and Jazz is a wonderful actor and director. We pick out scenes and they get worked on in front of the group and we rip into each other with brutal feedback, but in all seriousness, wonderful classes. Highly suggest that you check them out. They do invite agents to come and see some of the classes sometimes, so that can be a really, really great way for you to get direct exposure to an agent. Another one is MN Academy and they are closely affiliated with Middleweek Newton Talent Management, which is the agency that I'm signed with. Guys, how you doing? You good? MN Academy offer a wide variety of short courses and also individual classes, which you can check out. Highly suggest you have a look at them because they are directly linked to an agency. So naturally, my agents have a look at what MN Academy students are up to and then you get signed and then it's a great day for you. You see, you, you see. Toby Clark is another amazing mentor who offers individual acting mentorship and also directs a lot of short courses for young actors, especially for young emergent actors. Toby is a friend and mentor of mine and he is the one who helped me get signed with Midweek News and Talent Management. So, big up Toby, how you doing? <laughs> get yourself into those classes because the agents who are associated with them might come, although I cannot guarantee that they will come. I just have to put that as a disclaimer. Yeah, yeah. All right, safe. Also, the other mentor that I've already mentioned in this video is Ricky Beadle Blair. He has done an amazing range of workshops over the first lockdown that we had, and he still does workshops sometimes online as well as in person when it is safe to do so. He lit a creative fire under my ass in 2020, and I honestly owe me starting this YouTube channel partially to him. I will link his Twitter and everything down below. People, I need you to stop copying and pasting the same email to 25 different agents. It's not personal, it's not cute. I've done it and it didn't get me anywhere. Dear, copy, paste, Amy, I am an actor from da 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 da. I've just done this, I've just done that. I will read you da 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 da. Here's my CV, da da da, you know? Doing that over and over again, it's really obvious because there's no flavor. It is better to email one right agent for you with a banging email that they cannot refuse than it is to write to 50 different agents with the same generic email. I'm not saying you should only write to one agent, but when you're writing to these agents, you wanna make sure that you're looking for collaborators instead of being in the mindset of, I want this agent to take me on. A lot of people think that, oh, this celebrity is on this agent's books. So if I write to this agent, I'm gonna have a career like that celebrity. Bro, fun that celebrity, okay? You are not that celebrity. You have got something which that celebrity cannot offer, just like that celebrity has got something about them which makes them incredibly unique too. Do not fixate on the fact that just because this agent holds all of the celebrities, that's where you need to be. Bro, you'll get there. Always be personal with the agents that you're writing to. I cannot stress this enough. Go through their list of clients. What is it about their client list that made you wanna reach out to them? Do they represent a lot of people who are like you or do they not? Does that agent represent a lot of queer artists or do they not represent a lot of queer artists? Both are really good reasons to reach out to an agent. I noticed that you don't represent a lot of mixed race people in your books. I would love to fill that bracket for you. I would love to work with you in that regard. Or I noticed that you do represent a lot of mixed race actors in your books, um, which is why I'm reaching out to you because it makes me feel really confident that you know how to fight for these people and get them the work which they deserve. Something like that could really help. Ask yourself, what is the potential for a good relationship here? Either way, there can either be a market to fill or it will give you faith that that agent really knows how to push for those kinds of people in their books. Do you see what I'm saying? But Sev, I've got no experience. I haven't got a show reel. I've got no material. What do I do? It is very possible to make your own 
That is my favorite thing to say. I will always, always vouch for making your own work. If you have been on my channel for a while, you know that I released a self-tape masterclass last year. It is a 28 minute long video all about how to film a self-tape and not just how to film one, but what they can be used for. In that video, I go through equipment, I go through breakdowns, I go through what self-tapes are, I go through why we need them and everything to do with self-tapes. I highly suggest you watch that video after you finish watching this one because you can film a self-tape on your phone with very basic equipment and make it look amazing and that can be the footage which you can use to get signed to an agent it is possible it's how i did it so you're gonna do it too okay for the setup you need three things you need to prioritize good lighting good sound and you need a decent camera your phone will work fine how long should your self-tape be one to two minutes max even then i think two minutes is far too long i would say pick a good monologue that's around a minute long. Honestly, two minutes is a long time on camera. So if I were you, I would pick something short that gets to the point and that really shows off a slice of who you are, which brings me on nicely to my next point. What should you pick? Pick something that is a reflection of you, especially if you are just introducing yourself to these agents for the first time. Pick something that you relate to, pick something that you love, something that excites you, but stay away from melodrama. Guys, I said it, I said it with my chest and I'll say it again. Stay away from melodrama. Why? A lot of people think that good acting, good acting relates to serious, really dark, deep work and is very like, I must look down the camera and tell you that I love you, but that I have to kill you. You know, it's like, great, but is that really a reflection of you? It might be a reflection of a part of you and in if by all means, if you really feel like that is the piece that truly says a lot about who you are, go for it, pick it. I'm not gonna tell you what to do and who follows rules anyway, I don't know, like, <laughs> not me, but I certainly didn't. We're, we're living in dark times, guys. Please don't fall into the trap of thinking that good acting means serious acting. Make them laugh, G, make them laugh, you know? Like, not every day serious, please. I don't mean to sound limiting when I say stay away from melodrama. The range is gonna come. The type of roles that you will get put up for will change and will grow and will develop. You just have to be patient. Start with who you are because that is the basis of everything that you do in this industry. What's your favorite TV shows? Who do you relate to? Are there characters who are a similar age to you? A similar background? Do they have similar religious beliefs? Do they have a similar gender or sexual orientation to you? Which characters have got a similar accent to you? Find the characters that you relate to and the that you could really see yourself playing. Remember who the audience is. You are asking these agents to pay dedicated attention to you for one minute, two minutes, and it may be even a little bit longer with the time that it takes to read your email and the rest of your Spotlight CV, although it should not take that long because your emails are gonna be short because you listened to the first part of this video, okay? Okay. And if you can't find anything that you really relate to, write your own, babes write your own. You absolutely can write your own speeches. It shows an extra skill. It shows that you're quirky. It shows that you care about your career and that you are working hard for yourself. Don't get me wrong. You still care about your career if you don't write your own speech, okay? Don't get it twisted. Take ownership of what you want. You want to see yourself in a sick role? Write it for yourself, okay? No one's stopping you. Who's stopping you? Am I stopping you? No, I'm literally telling you to go do it. The door is open, all right? The door is right there. Go. No, after you've watched this video. Thank you. Make sure that the speech is going somewhere, all right? Put detail in your writing and enjoy the process. Keep it simple, have a clear objective. What does the character want and what is stopping them from getting it? That is your obstacle. In a monologue, I love to see a character solve a problem. Don't explain what the issue is at the beginning of your speech. I love it when the problem has happened externally and we are just seeing the character deal with it straight away from the top of the monologue. I don't wanna see you explaining what the issue is. I wanna see you try and figure it out. Now, these are just like, ideas just to get you started i just want to be clear these are not rules there are no rules in writing as far as i'm concerned so well there are like things you can follow but we are meeting them right at the beginning of that oh fuck moment you know by the end of the monologue i love to see the characters having made a decision to do something about it that doesn't mean that they have resolved it right it can still be a really tricky puzzle but i love it when characters have decided to make a decision about what they're going to do are they going to try and fix it are they going to leave it as it is are they going to do something to themselves to try and make it better something like that choosing to do nothing about it is still choosing to do something about it just so we're clear right we've got a kid 
Let's call them Johnny. Johnny is getting bullied at school for having long hair. Johnny is young, 13. Johnny's come home to mum and is upset because kids at school keep making fun of their hair. What's Johnny gonna do about it? Tell mum about what's going on at school? That's already taken a decision. By the end of the speech, is Johnny gonna cut their hair? Ask mum to, to move schools? Are they gonna dye their hair a different colour? You know, that's a really dramatic example. You get the gist of it. What does the long hair mean to them? Why do they choose to have hair that long? Who did that hairstyle for them? You can put those in the speech because that adds stakes and flavour and makes it more interesting. Just to be clear, when you're writing a monologue for yourself, keep it about minute and a half, two minutes max. There is a problem that you're trying to solve. It's something to do. You want the monologue to be going somewhere. What do they want from another person? Who are they talking to? Why are they talking to them? How long have they been talking to them? These are the type of questions that you should be asking yourself. What happens if they don't get what they want? I think you should absolutely, in your emails, be including, if not a showreel, at least a self-tape of a monologue which either you've written yourself or a monologue which you love from a film or TV or play. If you have got experience, edit your showreel down to two minutes maximum. Each scene that you include, keep it about 30 seconds to a minute long, maybe a little bit longer than that. Mine has probably got scenes which are a little bit longer than that, but whatever. Avoid putting theatre work in your showreel because your showreel mostly showcases what work you've done on screen. If you have got a really high quality filmed piece of theatre that you've done, you might not have a piece of theatre that's filmed to the standard of a big production company like the National Theatre do with their NT Live performances, but something in that style. Okay, sure, go ahead, stick that in your showreel if you have got no other material to show. Make sure that it's really clear by labelling what the name of the project was, what channel or what production company it was and the director's name if you want to include that as well. That's what I like to do whenever I'm making my show reels. Put your best work first. Ideally, your best work will be your most recent work. But if your most recent work doesn't showcase you to your full capabilities, then put the strongest piece of work. Okay, so you've emailed your agents, you've made sure that those agents are the right ones for you. But what if no one replies? Oh my God. Oh girl, I have been there. It is a tough world that we live in in this industry. Oh my God. Should you follow up in an email? Yes, once, maybe twice. If you have written a banging email that includes an example of your work and a really solid headshot and you've included correct contact details for yourself and you still don't get a reply, maybe that agent just wasn't right for you or maybe they're just not looking. I understand that this is an industry where we often get rejections or sometimes people just don't respond. Listen, yeah, follow up once, like a week after you've had no response and then move on. Honestly, when you've sent the email, do not dwell on it. And I know it's easier said than done. It does not stop there. So what if an agent doesn't reply to you? You do not need an agent to get work because casting directors are constantly offering work directly themselves, okay? So let's talk about that. Follow casting directors on social media. You don't know any casting directors? Okay, I want you to go watch your favorite show. No, I want you to Google your favorite show after you finish watching this video. Do not do it now. Type in the name of your favorite show followed by cast and director. You will find information on who cast whatever show, okay? I'm gonna put a, a few pictures of some cast and directors which I follow around my head right now. Follow them, turn on post notifications on their Twitter and their Instagram pages, and you will never miss any announcements which they make about any public castings they are doing for film, theater, TV, radio, voiceover work, or whatever work it is that you're trying to find, okay? Although it might not be in my case, I know people who have booked work directly through cast and directors, okay? It is very possible, and if it happened for them, it can happen for you. Casting directors root for you. Sometimes they might cast you in a short film and they will then call them agents and say, hey, I just cast so-and-so in a short film. They were really great and I think you should have a look at them, okay? That does happen. Word of mouth is powerful in this industry. That is something which I'm sure most of you already know. And hey, even if they don't recommend you to an agent directly, you now have material which you can use in your showreel. And you can then use that showreel to either write to agents who you've not written to before or you can follow up on emails which you wrote a year before and say, hey, I wrote to you last year when I didn't have any work. Now I have got this credit. Would you mind having a look at this? You know, it's a kind of a win-win. Don't feel like only your agents can get in touch with casting directors. You can do it yourself. Go book the jobs, honey, go.
Agents might also do something similar. Sometimes an agent might have a meeting with someone and think, mm, I really like this person, it's just they're not right for me or I already have someone really similar to them in my books, but I know that my other agent friend is looking for clients who are similar to this person. Let me call them up, beep, 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 beep. Hi. They might say, hey, I just spoke to this person. She's looking for representation. Let me forward you their details and you can get in touch with them directly. Agents know each other and it's all done with love. That agent might then forward that first impression onto another agent and then you will give them a great first impression and then they'll call you and it will be a beautiful, wonderful collaboration. My agent actually said that to me. Okay. I think that's everything that I spoke to my agents about, but now I wanna have a look at some of the questions which you guys asked me on my Instagram, so let's do that. How do I find agents that are right for me being an actor musician? Great question, we've already kind of covered this, but make sure that you are researching agents that have got other actor musicians on their books. Have a look at some actor musicians which you like and see who they're represented by. If you are training, if you are on a course where you have got other actor musicians, see who the previous graduate years got repped by because that gives you a really clear indication of which agents are gonna be taking on recent graduates. In the interview stage with your agent, what kind of things did you discuss before you co-signed? This is a really good question. Okay, it was really simple guys. We talked about who I am, where I come from, what my family's like, the work that I have done. I've done a foundation course at drama school, so we talked about that and how was it? What did I like about it? What did I dislike about it? We talked about the course which I was doing at the time, what kind of work I wanna be doing, films I love, what plays I love, and it was quick. A lot of people think that these meetings have to last for an hour. Guys, don't be mistaken by that. I was literally in and out of there in like five, 10 minutes. And then she said, I'm gonna send you a, a bit of material to have a look at. Would that be okay with you? I said, yeah, sure. She sent me an email like 20 minutes later saying, hey, Sev, lovely to meet you, da 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 And I was like, oh, thanks, girls. It was lovely to meet you too. And they said, here are some scripts you have, have a look at. Can you get these back to us by Wednesday? I said, wow. It was a Monday. Girl, they gave me two days. They weren't playing around. I think that she gave me a short period of time because that's often how it is with self, with self tapes. You often get a really quick turnover. She gave me a couple of days to get in a self tape to her. And she also asked me to record a couple of monologues of my own choosing. She had seen a show role which I had put together through the training course, which I did, but she hadn't seen anything else. So she was curious to see what else I could do, which is why she asked me to do a little bit more material just to get a flavor for who I am outside of our conversation. So we actually spoke about a lot that was not to do with acting. Like I mentioned before, you wanna speak to these guys about stuff that's not to do with acting, speak about who you are as a person. And she asked me to send in some material to her. Not every agent is gonna do this, but because I was brand new to the industry and didn't know a thing, and my agent is really open to signing people who have not got much training, that is why she asked. Can you meet with more than one agent before deciding which agent is the right one? Absolutely. If you have got meetings with multiple agents before making a decision, there is nothing wrong with that, all right? Just be honest, be honest about it. When you then make your decision about which agent you wanna to go to, be honest with the other agents who you spoke with and who who are interested in working with you and say to them, listen, I'm gonna take up another offer, but I'm really, really grateful for our conversation and I would love to stay in touch with you in the future, for example. Leave every situation with grace, whether you are choosing another agent over another for the first time or whether you are moving on to another agent. This question, I was a bit, mm, mm, because this is more about what happens like after you've actually got signed and we're talking about how to actually get signed in the first place, but I'll read it anyway. Is there etiquette about jumping from your original agent to a bigger one as you blow up or is that expected? I'll be honest, I think that's a really big misconception. True, some agents who have got bigger names or higher profiles might have access to different jobs, but that doesn't mean that every actor definitely moves on to different agents once they blow up, you know? And also the agent who got you the job that blew you up What's to say that they're not gonna get you other jobs that will continue prospering in your career? The casting directors, when they are interested in an actor, if they see your work on TV and they think, oh, I really like this actor, I wonder who they're repped by. The person that they call is an agent, regardless of how popular that agent is. Does that make sense? So no, I don't think that there's etiquette about jumping from one agent to a bigger one when you blow up. However, sometimes actors do move on. That I'm not gonna pretend that that doesn't happen. I have moved on, it happens. If you are gonna move on to another agent for whatever reason, just make sure that you are leaving every situation with grace and remembering what that person did for you. If you choose to move on, of course that can be disappointing, but like decisions that we make in this industry are not personal, you know? Rejections are not personal. It's not a reflection of you. It's just the nature of the industry. What is a normal 
fee for agents to be charging. It varies. Usually agent commission is less for theater than it is for film and TV because the film and TV market usually pays more. I've heard most agents usually take anywhere between 15 to 20% for film and TV. And some agents will take 10 to 15 for theater. And I say some agents, I'm basing it off of the actors that I know and what they've told me about their relationship with their agents. But in all honesty, if you're worried that you're being swindled, ask around, ask other actors that you know, ask other agents that you know. If you have relationships with other agents, some people are, you know, agents have friends too, it's okay. Do your research. Always, always read every single contract that you are signing thoroughly. Do not ever sign anything without having read it fully. Those are the kind of rates which seem kind of familiar to me. Some people might be like, what? That's astonishing. That's astonishingly high or that's astonishingly low. Those are just the figures which I feel are familiar, but please don't take my word for it because other industries might behave differently. If you sign to an agency that has celebrity is there a chance of you being overlooked? Ah, okay. This is a really difficult question. Ask yourself, what is a good agent? I don't think that any agent signs you for no reason or just to make money. An agent will take you on because you are talented and you are a brilliant individual. I think it could happen, but I, I don't know it to happen specifically. I haven't heard it happen. Like I've got friends who are signed with very popular agencies that have got lots of celebrities and they're getting called very regularly because those agents are really good at what they do. Do you see what I'm saying? Those agents are good at maintaining relationships with clients. Communication is everything. I got another question. Well, it wasn't really a question. It was someone telling me I got signed to an agent in November, but they haven't messaged me or emailed me since. I'm making this video in what month is it? January, 2021. So that's like a couple months. If you're asking me for advice on that situation, Communication is key. Um, maintaining a good relationship with your agent is great. You should be able to call your agent about anything. No question is stupid, no question is dumb, especially if you're new to the industry. I know that when I didn't know anything, my agent answered so many questions that I had because I just wasn't sure what I was doing. I didn't know how to do a self tape, how to do this, how to do that, you know? Also, please, can we just draw attention to the times? We are living through a pandemic. Everyone's trying to make work happen. It's really, really difficult to get work at the minute. And I'm very grateful to be working myself, but I know that that is just not the reality for so many actors out there. Not working during this time is not a reflection of your acting ability. We are living in, you know? Call your agent, talk to them, have a conversation with them, ask them what's happening. Communication is key when you are building a relationship with your agent. It is the basis of everything, in my opinion. Are there objectively some agencies all actors want to be signed to like CAA? No, no. I will say that with my chest, no. I don't think that all actors want to be signed to top agencies or big popular agencies. Um, I am proof of that. I was not looking to be signed with the most popular agencies when I first started. I was looking for the, the agent that was gonna be right for me. I was looking for an agent that was gonna help me, somebody who had less training than her other counterparts. I was looking for someone who was gonna fight for me as a mixed race performer to make sure that I'm not getting pushed aside in these roles. I was looking for someone who was right for me. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm looking for the top agencies. Do you see what I'm saying? Some actors might think that oh, I should go sign with this top agency because my favorite celebrity works for them. Uh, I, mm, do you, do whatever, like, <laughs> do whatever you want. But me personally, I don't like that mentality because like I said to you before, just because that celebrity has done X, Y, Z, doesn't mean that you two are gonna do X, Y, Z. You're gonna do your own version of ABC and you're gonna boss it because that's you. And also that actor was a good actor before they signed with that agency. Do you see what I'm saying? It's about the work. Why is your actor your favorite actor? That actor is not your favorite actor because they signed with this agency. That actor is your favorite actor because of the work that they do. Does an agent decide all of the jobs you can do? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, it's a conversation, it's communication. If my agent puts me up for a job, which I don't think I'm right for, I will absolutely call her and say, I really don't think I'm right for this. Or I, I, they are asking me to do something which I'm not comfortable with. You know, it's your career. You take control of what you want, okay? There's nothing wrong with saying no to jobs. In fact, saying no is one of the most powerful things that an actor can do because unfortunately people like to take advantage of actors in this industry sometimes. We have seen that happen. I don't need to explain that to a lot of you. The jobs that you book, are they only coming through your agent? So for example, if a filmmaker thought that you would fit a role in something, can they contact you directly? Beep, yeah, yeah, you can. Doesn't mean I'm gonna respond. <laughs> in my case, personally, I prefer it when people reach out to my agent 
for work. Like I just prefer it when they go through them. Like if I know you or if I have some kind of relationship with you, I don't mind you asking me directly, but my agent is just so much better at managing the business side of things. So I prefer for people to go through her. People can reach out to you directly. And if you're unrepresented, oh my God, yeah. Like, you know, you might get people reaching out to you if you're a really good actor, but you don't have an agent. That happens. How did I approach my agent? Okay, story time. So I had just finished the foundation course at drama school and I thought that drama school was my ride or die. I thought if I don't get into drama school, I'm gonna fail. I don't know what I will do. Oh, woe is me. I auditioned, <laughs> didn't get in, peak. I was 19 years old, didn't know what I was gonna do. And I started talking to people. I went to the National Theatre and I went to a couple of workshops that the National were holding and I met actors and writers and creative people there. Then I decided to message the people who were leading those workshops and I said, hey, I love what you do. I'm an actor who doesn't know what to do next. Have you got any more events coming up? Because I really wanna work with you. And I pestered them, don't do that too much because some people get annoyed by it, but I did pester people. I asked these people, have you got any more events coming up? I went to an event at the British Library held by Inuit Elams, which was amazing. I went to this event by myself. I didn't know anyone. And I met an actor called Hamid Animashan. Hamid is amazing. I would not be working if it wasn't for him. So Hamid, if you're watching this, big up you, you're amazing. You know this because I say thank you to you every time that I see you. Anyway, Hamid said to me, I can see that you're really passionate and you care about what you do. You should check out this course called Alt Actor Training. I went, I auditioned. That is where I met Toby Clark, who I mentioned earlier in this video. Alt Actor Training was a free course which was set up to help actors like me who are from low income background families and who are either trying to get into drama school, but more of a focus on getting into the industry. I was gonna audition for drama school after I did Alt because I thought I wanna go and train for three years. But when I did Alt, we were able to do a showcase and a showreel and got headshots for free because that was part of the benefit of the course, which was amazing. There was no other course offering anything close to that at the time. I did that course and three months later we did a showcase in front of tons of industry professionals where I met incredible people who were part of that course and I forever love you guys in it. I got signed by a different agent on the back of that, but that agent wasn't the right one for me. They were lovely, just weren't right for me at the time. So Toby reached out to the agent who I am with today, which is Middleweek Newton Talent Management, reached out to them and said, hey, here are some people who didn't get signed by the agents that they wanted or who are not working from our course. Would you like to meet with any of them? She saw my showreel and said, we really like Seb's work. Would she like to come in and have a chat with us? I had a chat. She asked me to do some self tapes for her, put me up for some real jobs. I moved over to her and the rest is history. So that's how I signed with my agent. It was the people that I knew. I had a set of work with me, even though I didn't have any professional credits, I still had a show reel. And even if I didn't, I would have made one with the self tapes because I was asked to do self tapes anyway. And I had the conversations with them. Okay, so I have answered everyone's questions. Even if I didn't answer it directly, I have answered it in this video in some way or another. How to get started, go to classes. That is the first thing that you should be doing when you are getting started in this career. You're not gonna get anything unless you put yourself out there. It is scary, it is terrifying, but meet people, chat to people about stuff other than the industry and you will get what you want and you will get the results that you deserve, okay? Thank you so much for watching this video. You can find other videos of mine everywhere. I will see you guys in the next one. Go get signed. Take care, good night.